We've had a fair share of evasive interviews this morning. Uh, in America, uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. seems to be denied a security detail, although he's uh, looking to fight in the primaries, and there's been, well, there is evidence of infiltration and, uh, and, and an arrest yesterday, I think, of somebody in sunglasses pretending to be part of his own personal security um, group. It, 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 it's a little bit worrying. But over here, you know, we again, we've got this sort of dodging of questions. Um, James Cleverly, uh, do you think, do you think that, um, uh, about, about Lib Libya, do you think um, the reduction of budgets have consequences. Well, he says you can never reduce budgets without any consequences at all. Clever answer, but it's not really what was being asked. Um, what was being asked was, when are we going to, what are we going to do to help Libya? Because this is a an international crisis and we should be there. And when it comes to Russell Brand, uh, Laura Newsberg says, um, Laura Quensberg, sorry, says uh, are you um uh are there wider questions the industry must answer is there some sort of cover up going on what's happening and uh james cleverly seems to be in on this uh secret narrative and he says well it's about the voices of the powerless um it's about control. I entirely agree with him, but it's an evasive answer. As for the spy story, did you know about the arrest of a parliamentary researcher before you uh, left for your visit to China? Of course he did. And he says, we don't discuss intelligence or security matters. Um, with Keir Starmer over on Sky... Uh, you treat smugglers as terrorists. Does that mean that you detain them without charge? We need to put people smugglers in the same category as terrorists. Well, that doesn't answer the question. Uh, you, you know, could we do a migrant deal with the EU? Uh, the Shadow Cabinet uh, Minister Pad McFadden says to Laura... Quensberg, we're not going to uh, take part in an EU-wide scheme. Well, surely that is what was being suggested the other day. You know, all, all this moving around and without getting clear answers, either here in the UK or in the US, I, I, I think we're copying American twisted... Uh, journalistic responses. I think we're copying that. I think it's wrong. And I think it's destroying our journalism. I think it's destroying our political life. But I think there's a great deal we're taking from the States. And what we're seeing is a rise in, in, in the cost of elections and a cheapening of the, of the deal. We're looking across at other countries... Um, where slogans rather than debate is the order of the day. Slogans get us nowhere. Slogans got us into Brexit. And slogans, as Mrs May, as Theresa May, discovered, do not win an argument. Brexit means Brexit. What tosh. What tosh. She had no idea what she was talking about. And that is the problem. Slogans are nothing. You have to engage in a real argument. Now, it doesn't need to be in public. But my fear is that the the sort of pat answers that we're getting in television interviews, radio interviews, are the pat answers that ministers over here and over there are giving to each other, are, are, are giving in response to questions uh, on the Hill and in Westminster. And that is no good for our respective democracies. It's no good at all. This is nonsensical. This is also, incidentally, exactly what we what we get in Russia.
Russia again is all about political posturing and sloganizing. Except in Russia, many of the slogans have been concocted by President Putin and they are not, not terribly memorable. But they are nevertheless slogans and formulae for getting round a, uh, a, 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 a situation and um, definitions of things which don't mean, which are removed from the reality, which don't mean anything. Um, and I think before we slip into that Russian nonsense, we need to pull back because we are so close to linguistic chaos. Linguistic chaos or lying. And we've had our flirtation with lying in the chamber of the House of Commons already.